The next area of law that we're going to review is theft crimes. There are seven theft crimes, and it's basically crimes against property. Once again, seven crimes against property. They are theft crimes. All theft crimes are specific intent crimes. Once again, all theft crimes are specific intent crimes. All right, so let's go over those seven crimes. They are number one, larceny. Number two, continuing trespass. Number three, larceny by trick. Number four, false pretense. Number five, robbery. Number six, embezzlement. Number seven, receiving stolen property. Once again, larceny, continuing trespass, larceny by trick, false pretense, robbery, embezzlement, and receiving stolen property. Once again, all theft crimes are specific intent crimes. Don't forget that. So let's go over larceny. There are six elements to larceny. Let's give you first a definition. The definition of larceny is the trespassory taking, carrying away the personal property of another with intent to permanently deprive or steal. Once again, definition of a larceny is the trespassory taking, carrying away the personal property of another with intent to permanently deprive or steal. So let's go over those elements individually. Number one is the trespassory, and that means without the owner's permission. There was no consent. Number two, taking. It's basically the assertion of control. Taking is the assertion of control. And number three is the carrying away. A very slight movement is enough. Again, carrying away. A very slight movement is enough. The personal property, um, I want you to know at common law, it was personal property only under the model penal code it's real property is okay, um, but the majority follows the personal property and that's what you want to follow on the MBE, all right? And number five is of another, it's property that belongs to another. And number six, intent to permanently deprive, meaning they were never going to return it. Let me give you an example of a larceny. So let's say that, um, Someone is uh, going into a friend's house and they're at a party, for example, and they see a wall, painting on the wall in the bathroom, a very small one, one they can actually stick in their purse. And she goes up and she says, hmm, I really like that painting. I think I'm going to take it. She takes it off the wall puts it in her purse and walks out in, into the party and her, the per, paintings in her purse. Has she committed a larceny? Absolutely. Let's say she sticks it in her purse and at, af, while she's at the party, she decides, hmm, I probably shouldn't have taken that painting. I'm gonna go put it back. Is she still guilty of larceny? Yes, she is. Because at the time she took it, she took it with the intent to take it. She picked it up, she took control over it, and she carried it away by putting it in her purse. The second she carried away, she, she took it and carried it away, that larceny was complete, okay? So another example that they, I've seen on the bar is where they ask you what's the person guilty of in a situation like this. Um, a and B are friends. A knows that B is out of town and he decides he's going to go and borrow B's skis without B knowing about it. He goes to B's house, he goes into the garage, he knows the garage is always unlocked, and he takes the skis. And while, while he's using them, what happens is he loses one of the skis. He has an accident and one of the skis are lost or broken. And he returns just one ski. Is A going to be guilty of stealing B's ski? No, he's not going to be guilty of a larceny because at the time he took it, he took it with the intent to return it. He didn't have the intent to steal it. Let's talk about property that appears to be lost or mislaid. There's basically two elements that we have to have to find somebody guilty of stealing lost or, or mislaid property. Number one, the finder must intend to steal the property at the time he found it. And number two, he must know or be able to find out 
the identity of the owner. Okay, once again, lost or mislaid property, we have two elements. You have to, number one, the finder must intend to steal the property when he found it, and number two, must know or be able to find out who the owner of the property is. All right, let's discuss real quick abandoned property. Abandoned property means that there was no way for the finder to, to know who the owner is. If they pick it up and they keep it, let's say it's a, a ball at the beach. Um, they pick it up, there's nobody around, they, there's no identification on the property, on this beach ball. I'm using something pretty simple, but you know, something like that. Or let's say they find a wallet in the street and the wallet has absolutely no identification in it and it's got a few bucks inside of it. There's no way to find out who, who lost it. We don't have any identification whatsoever. It's just abandoned property, it's lost property. We're not gonna hold somebody um, guilty of a larceny in a situation like that because it's abandoned property. He doesn't have any way of finding out who the owner is. Moving forward to the next area that would be Larceny by continuing trespass. Again, it's called the continuing trespass, and it's another way to um, find somebody guilty of a larceny. Again, it's called the continuing trespass doctrine, and let me give you the definition of that. It's where the defendant takes property with the intent to return it, but then later decides to keep it. He can be found guilty of a larceny via the continuing trespass doctrine. Okay, so basically it's where you're going to see, um, let's give you the skiing example. In the skiing example, where the guy came in, he took the skis, and he used them to ski. In the example I gave you earlier, one of the skis was um, broken or lost. In this particular situation, the ski, he intended to return it, but he has the skis, he's enjoying skiing with them so much, he decides, wow, these are fantastic skis, and he decides he's going to keep them rather than return them. That is a continuing trespass, all right? So we can find somebody guilty of larceny via what is called continuing trespass doctrine, all right? So let's move on to the next one. The next one is called larceny by trick. Once again, number three, of the theft crimes is larceny by trick. There are five elements to larceny by trick and I want you to be on the lookout for some type of a misrepresentation or a lie, sort of a fraud or cheating is what you're gonna look for. It's called larceny by trick. So the definition of larceny by trick is the trespassory, fraudulent taking of the personal property of another with intent to permanently deprive. Once again, it's the trespassory fraudulently taking the personal property of another with intent to permanently deprive. So let's go over those um, individually. Number one, trespassory. Again, it's without the owner's permission or consent. Number two, taking by use of fraud, trick, or cheating. So you've got to see somebody um, lying or cheating at a game like cards, for example. Um, so you're going to find, just make sure you're looking for some type of a cheating going on. And it is the carrying away, the intent is enough, the small carrying away is enough, the personal property, again, common law personal property, modern law real property is okay, but on the bar exam, you're still going to follow the common law because that is still the majority. The intent to steal property of another, okay?